All right, so we have our battle bots. This is battle number one. Today, the students in this third grade class at Ryan Elementary STEAM School are beginning a new challenge. You have a first prototype in iteration number one. And as always the case in design thinking, they're beginning with a question in mind. So here's our driving question. How can we as engineers and architects design and continue to improve an armor that is successful for battle. And that one question naturally leads to a whole lot more. The questions come. You can't stop them, they just come. Why are we doing this? What kind of materials are we going to use? Do we have certain times? While this barrage might seem a bit overwhelming to most of us, their teacher, Katie Gambardella, knows that these questions are a precious resource in learning. So you really have to make sure you're doing that lifelong learning skill of asking questions, right? And constantly be asking questions, correct? Get it, got it good? Beautiful. The innate curiosity we all have must be continuously nurtured. As a child, they're naturally curious. I don't want to stop that curiosity. I want to take it and I want to cultivate it into more and more and more and more. We really have to come back to that natural love of learning and generating questions and asking questions and really letting kids be curious in an inquiry type setting. It, they are going to be successful as they go through. That can be a challenge because as students get older, that natural curiosity has tended to subside. And I find that having worked with college students most of my life, often some of that energy for asking questions has dulled a little by the time they get to sophomore year. It doesn't have to be that way. Changing the educational model from one that focused on lecture and recitation to one where kids lead the way in finding answers keeps the curiosity alive. Let's go, let's go. Now it's your time. It's basically in an in a inquiry-based classroom. It's giving them um, certain tools or materials and just letting them discover independently on their own, really kind of making that self-discovery. Though we can always redesign later. How would we get it to stay? Oh yeah, it, it fits perfectly. And that helps to prepare students for a changing future. We really want to get kids living in that world and be comfortable in that world. So when these eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds are an adult, it's going to look very different. So we have to make sure that they're able to adapt and be able to have some grit and be able to problem solve, communicate with each other. That is what they're going to need to be successful. While we're not necessarily imagining a dystopian future, it has so many points. Today's task was to create an armor with destructive capacity. Okay, heat number three, knockdown and doomsday. That Mad Max would be proud of. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. Ready. Battle. Battle. The team's designs are put to the test in the octagon. Battle. Failures in the ring lead to reflection and new questions. Oh, River and Janet, they were so top heavy on here that it didn't melt. As soon as they go, it would just fall over. So what did you guys decide to do? And hopefully the improvements that they make will fare better next time. I already see some new iterations on there. And while the battles are engaging and standards are achieved, there is something much more at stake. We have an end in mind to create a successful robot that's going to withstand in the battle, but it's really the process, not the product that we're focusing on. Learning how to inquire and other skills that will serve them for the rest of their lifetime. And I really want them to love what they're doing and know that I can do so many things. Yes! Yes!